Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Wild Wild Best. I am your host, Furious George 94, or Deputy George. Uh, and with me, as always, is my muted partner, Shane Westwood, or the man in the Michigan hat, as he goes going on? on Twitter. I, I'm doing well. I, I'm loving our new official intro. Um, yeah, that's great. I'm loving. I'm loving our very like futuristic safe technology in the you know 19th century western based show but you know it I, it's a great combo it's kind of like the wild wild west movie with Will Smith and um the one british dude that is in a lot of <laughs> the stuff one, the one british Kenneth guy. Branagh that's his name yeah <laughs> Wow, I, that's a good pull. I would not have gotten that. <laughs> I should know it as an English teacher because he's in like every Shakespeare movie ever. Um, because he directs them and then casts mm. himself as the main character. While we're talking about that, the quick side note, he casts time. himself as Hamlet in Hamlet. Hamlet, by the way, is a college age student. He casts himself as Hamlet and he's like 38. And he has like a big mole on his face the whole movie. It's kind of annoying, but I I digress. <laughs> You're here to make some money with us on Wild Wild Bets. So before we jump into our kind of sports topics for the night, let's start with talking about our weekend at the uh, bookie or whatever. I, I'm not great what? with the phrasing. <laughs> well, <laughs> weekend at the bookies quickie with the bookie segment brought to you yes. by wild wild bets uh a recap i think it's the word <laughs> maybe <Sure. laughs> uh so wait you're wanting to go over <laughs> records or what <laughs> like how we did thought, last weekend yes how did we do so um yeah you know i i think you know you and i talked about we have so what we each have is we have a br- li- living and breathing document um yeah. and on this document we're tracking uh, our odds and our stakes on those odds, the wins and losses, and then kind of the, the whole profit loss, wins, loss. So we'll just share that and we'll just kind of compare in that way. Um, yep. And really, there's nothing that we're competing over other than our smart money shootout, our sharp yep. money shootout, uh, because we're we're just all trying to make money in this world, right? So yeah, it's us there's against nothing the for... sports books, right? Exactly, except for the sharp money shootout. So yeah. we'll get there eventually. But let's start with these uh, these games. So uh, what do you have for us? How did you do this past weekend? After yeah, so I I didn't place any NHL uh, bets. I don't think college football. I think I was five and eight. So I have overall records. I bet a shitload of college games. I'm my overall record is 106 wins, 84 losses. Um, I'm up 26.83 units. Uh, college basketball. I didn't bet any over the weekend. NFL. I'm a 63 and 62. Um, but I am up 6.5 units. Uh, because some of mine I've done like multi-unit bets on ones I liked a lot. So like an example was this uh, Monday I bet on the under and on Chiefs money line, but I had two units on the under. So I went one and one, but I gained a unit basically. So, um, but yeah, so it was good. Um, our head-to-head game was really so I kind of took I tweeted this out. I took a little bit of a bye week from betting the NFL. I didn't love the card and. Uh, I was on the road a lot. You're a Saturday. coward. Yeah, I'm a. Yeah, what do they say? The West, yellow bellied, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're yeller. Yeah, old yeah, yeller. yeller. <laughs> yeah. um, Don't go in my backyard. So, I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get old yellered. Um, so yeah, NFL. I didn't bet much. College. I was a little under 500. So we are up though in both sports. So uh, how about you? I had kind of a tumultuous weekend uh, that was saved by. A fantastic Monday. Um, mm. So I'll, I'll kind of run you run you through this. Uh, oh. My my college basketball um, bets are in, in the uh, in the loo, as the British would say. The proverbial shitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the outhouse. Uh, mm. One in four am I in college betting uh, mm. or college basketball? I should say. Uh, my one win was. Arizona to cover the spread. Um, nice. Everything else I bet was a travesty. I 
Mm-hmm. Technically, I did get the IU against the spread, but I had parlayed it with another game that did not hit, and that was my mistake, and I lost there. So Tough. college basketball, not my friend so far. NHL. <clears throat> so NHL, I'm three and four. Not great. Okay. I have about minus a little over half a unit uh, that I'm under Something. right now. Yeah. Um, and that so is NHL, again, you have wild swings and odds. So it's like you could bet one team money line. It's like plus 130. And then another one, it's like you'll do puck line minus one and a half. And it's my, you know, minus 140. So that one, yeah. the, the record might be close to 500, but the units are going to vary a lot. So, And, and so this is what... Again, I get overzealous with things, and as a fan of the Blackhawks, who have one of the most exciting talents in the league right now, basically every Blackhawks game, I'm betting Connor Bedard anytime goal, and you know it only hits every so often, Um, and so I have lost there. Uh, So there, uh, on I think it was on Friday was uh, Blackhawks Lightning, and so I put money on Connor Bedard, Nikita Kucherov, Braden Point. Anytime goals. The only one that hit of that was Braden Point. Um, I had, probably got uh, close the, to breaking even though, because they're all probably plus one eighty, plus one ninety at least. Right? Except that I put I put a stake, I put one and a half units on Connor Bedard because I'm okay. He's my guy. Um, <laughs> I had a separate Blackhawks game. I put an SGP on that lost. Um, I had Toronto at Red Wings. Red Wings plus one and a half. Uh, that one hit, oh, that, hit. that was the odds yeah. were bad. Um, okay. or not minus one and a half, plus one and a half. Plus one, yeah. Um, the my so I was I was de- I was dead in a loss, like, uh, and I still have a overall loss. But what saved me so much was last night, uh, Monday night, I put a live money line bet on the stars who were down to the Rangers, one nothing at the time, and they came back and won the game like six to three. <clears throat> and I got that at plus nice. 230 and put half a hmm. half a unit on that. So that really helps me there. All right. I do want to comment on that briefly. A lot of yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, a lot of value that I find is if you do your research ahead of time and you like a side, right? Like, so this weekend we're gonna get to it, but like Lions, I think, are laying seven and a half against the the, the Packers, right? So it's like, hey. I like the Lions. I don't like the number. If you if you do your homework ahead of time and you know the side you want to be on and then you watch for an early score, the live bet is a great way. Because it's like, say the Packers go down the field and score first, and now you're seeing Lions minus three and a half. It's like, all right, that's when you jump on it. Or you see like the Coyotes are playing against the Bruins. Coyotes score first. They go up one nothing. Now I can get Bruins money line at only like minus 120. It's like okay, I'm still pretty sure the Bruins are going to win. The market right. just overcorrects, which it has to. It's a numbers game, and they're like, "All right, odds now." The first team just scored. We have to adjust the line accordingly by a certain number of points. You can find a lot of value on that sometimes. Where, yeah, I've bet hockey, especially a team goes down one nothing, and if you hammer the money line on the team that just went down, and it's like twelve minutes into the first, you can get a lot of value there. So, yeah, NBA. I'm at an overall profit of I'm up three and a half units. I'm nice. three and three. So here's the deal. Wow. Did you uh, hit a parlay? No. <laughs> so that's a big thing. Listen, the bulls are so bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. That le- <laughs> Monday night, it's Miami Heat at the Chicago Bulls. I got my bet in late. The game already started. So I live bet heat minus one and a half. This was two to two at the time. Okay. Heat minus one and a half. They won 118 to like 100. So they far hit it. But I'm so confident in how bad the Bulls are that I placed uh, five units on that bet. (laughs) And so by hitting that, it swung me very largely into the positive. So yeah. Swinging large. You got that right. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, College football. uh, College football. I'm four and three. Small profit, just over a half unit. Um, my biggest, to me, my biggest victory was a couple of the games that you were unsure of. So uh, Georgia covering and Washington covering. Um, yeah, those were exciting were, for me. 
you were against me on Washington, so that's one of the ones I didn't hit. I did end yeah. up adding Georgia late, so I did. Oh, and Texas, one. I think covered too. And you had, and I was on Iowa. Iowa. Yep. Yeah, yeah, or Iowa State. Yeah. Did you bet Texas um, or? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yep. So, all right, yeah. and then NFL, NFL. Okay, NFL was I was not looking too pretty. I'm up a lot because I hit a parlay oh. last night. So yes. Monday night football. All right, so here we go. So I I hit I hit Cardinals. I hit Browns. I hit uh I hit the Buccaneers with an alternate spread because I was gonna say you, yeah. yeah. I hit Rams money line. I hit Vikings plus three. Wait, is this um, all in a parlay? No, this is individual. Oh, okay. I'm getting there. All right. I lost other parlays. I did Sunday. I, lo- I had a Sunday night parlay. I, I had an anytime touchdown parlay. I had a Bears versus Lions parlay. That one sucked too. That really sunk me um, from this week of betting. Otherwise, my NFL bets are looking pretty good. Monday night, I had Eagles plus two and a half. They obviously go on and win, so yep. I hit that one there. That one helped. My big one was I had a parlay of the under, a Travis Kelsey and Jalen Hurts anytime touchdown. Odds were plus 951 for those three things together, and I hit the win there, and that gives me a profit of nine units. So I was – Nice. So I was thrilled. <laughs> That's a ballsy parlay if you're parlaying multiple touchdown scorers with the under. And I think the sports book actually rewards that. So if you look, because I've played around with this before, if you know what I mean. Um, if you bet like a touch, a, you know, a Kelsey touchdown, a Hertz touchdown and the over, I think you get worse odds than if you bet those and the under. So somehow it's calculating, I think, at least uh, the book I was using. It's like if you're betting multiple touchdowns, but then you bet the under the odds of that in theory would be le- like, say I bet if anytime touchdowns and the under it's like, I'm basically calling my shot. Those are the only people who are going to score. I think the book accounts for that. Um, yeah. I, I just know that they're the easy, they're the safe bets when betting those yeah. two teams in terms of anytime touchdowns. Yeah, and, but I also, yeah. I felt good about the, I felt good about the under <clears throat> where I got concerned was that first touchdown from the Chiefs was mm-hmm. the first two touchdowns were from neither guy because the Chiefs threw it to mm-hmm. I don't remember his name and Justin something and the eighty four or whatever yeah and DeAndre Swift scored the first touchdown for the Eagles so so it's like now your next two need to be the two you bet on otherwise you're were. gonna hit the over <laughs> right yeah. yeah no that was good so I had the under and like I had said I had the under and I had the Chiefs money line. So unfortunately, that drop, uh, Valdez Scantling's drop. If he had caught uh, that, Chiefs probably win the game. But also, we still had a little margin. If he had caught that, we're still at the under. So I thought I was going to go two and zero. Oh. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, we're in a good spot though. I mean, we're profitable. Yeah. It sounds like in multiple sports, and we're kind of getting to the swing of the show. So, um, and what's important is that you know we're profitable enough that you guys think we're credible <laughs> that you listen <laughs> otherwise hopefully you just find us entertaining or and ideally both but please gamble um, responsibly but if you tail our picks really it's a retirement fund like we are that confident <laughs> no actually i shouldn't yeah um <laughs> what <laughs> i'm not no, it's, it's fun I mean, like you said there's some aspect of like wanting credibility on this it's also to me, betting is just an entertainment tax. Like it boosts the entertainment of a game yeah. you might not have cared as much about otherwise. And so, if we can talk about entertainment betting in a way that's entertaining, you know, that's just yep. um, well. For example, doing. starting here, starting here in the next, you know, probably towards the end of this episode, we'll have uh, we both have laid some money down on Kansas in the Kansas versus mm. uh, Marquette game uh, called that's basketball talk, game. Right? No, it's a 9.30 Central Time tip-off. 9.30 Central? I thought it was 9.30 Eastern. Dang. No, 10.30 Eastern. Yeah. Well, right now I'm on Eastern Michigan and the under, and they're up 24 to nothing. Eastern Michigan plus five, (laughs) so that should be pretty safe. Um, What's the over-under? 37 and a half. We're like halfway through the third. So we're okay, I think. Worst case, I'm going to go one and one. Um how is how are they up that big when they they were only favored by five? They were 
plus five and a half. They were were plus five? (laughs) Yeah. It's that's the Mac. (laughs) Mac football, baby. (laughs) It's just a and they're on the road too. And Mich and Eastern Michigan's terrible. (laughs) So the Mac is one area I have not tried really any betting in whatsoever. So the appeal of it, so I grew up in Michigan. So regionally I was familiar with a lot of it because you're right near Toledo, Eastern, Central, and Western Michigan. Um right. It's also fun because they play on nights when there's not really any other football. So like right. halfway through the football season, they start playing these Tuesday night, Wednesday night mat games. Uh, so once you get into gambling, you quickly learn to appreciate Mac football. So yeah. you make it sound like I'm a rookie. I am not a rookie. <laughs> I just haven't played the Mac. All right. Yeah. So yeah. take mm-hmm. it easy. Um, <laughs> so, okay. <clears throat> let's, uh, Let's transition. Oh, our sharp, our sharp money shootout. Um, so we had 49ers and we had the Buccaneers. The line was 11 and a half. Buccaneers are on the plus side. Niners on the minus. Um, I took the Buccaneers and the <laughs> Niners were the ones that covered the spread there. Um, the line did end up shifting to 13 and a half by the time the game started which was that the was line the that regular I, line yep that was the line that i ended up getting the buccaneers at um which is crazy and they did cover that line but that doesn't count because that wasn't the line when we did our shootout so i'll take the loss there um we have not yet discussed this but we'll we'll discuss a little bit outside the show um but we might we, what we might do is add up scores and when we get to a certain lost count um the, that loser may have a punishment of some sort that they have to face um so if, if which yeah. based on our historical punishments we've done on other shows will be worth watching <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah that's true that's true one of them um, is still in your twitter bio i noticed that like last week i think your twitter yeah. bio still says i made my friend eat a bottle of relish <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. I did drink a whole bottle of pickle relish on the show. Oh, that was I'll be honest. You've been a lot nicer with punishments than I've been because yeah, I have. <laughs> like the one, <laughs> the one punishment, uh, like the agreement was, oh, I will like basically it started with me. Oh, I'm gonna drink like gross sodas. Like oh, it, kind of like the Halloween Jelly Bellies, where it's like, yeah. oh, this is like not abhorrent to drink but it you know it's not fun either Mm -hmm. and it started there and that was what you were cool with well my wife (laughs) my wife learned that i forced you to eat relish i forced you to wear ohio state gear and my wife is like my wife was basically like you're not facing enough of punishment and so she convinced me to buy Bud Light Chalada, which was a Bud Light. Oh, it's that's... Clam- Clamato, wasn't it? Clamato. Well, it's Bud Light mixed with Clamato. Oh, it's, so it's, it's called it's a Bud Light Chalada. Yeah. That was because I Holy tried some. Crap. We did that a was... disc golf game where the loser drank some at each hole. Oh, my gosh. It was the literally one of the worst I've things I've ever Oh, my word. It... Yeah. If yeah. you don't know, I mean, if you don't know what Clamato is, look it up. If you do know what Clamato is, it was still go look it up and read the origin of it because it's it, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever it's basically like why a it's bloody created. mary with like cocktail shrimp juice poured. no the <laughs> we read it the, the description is that clamato is literally tomatoes it is somebody was once somebody rich and very white was once like hey <laughs> what if we take tomato soup tomato soup's good you know and what if we take clam chowder soup that's good too and what if we mix them together mm. that was like how it started my favorite just love it yeah. and then and then and the-, the more white people were like what if we added like peppers and celery to this too you know let's make it chunky while we're at it <laughs> and then make it alcoholic yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah so we'll work on we'll work on figuring out what that'll look like um but let's go ahead and get into a couple <clears throat> topics, some topics that might affect your betting. Um, and this one is easiest to talk about regarding futures. Um, so the first future I want to discuss, I really want to talk about bears 
but the Bears yep. haven't fired their head coach, which is annoying. So let's talk about the Las Vegas Raiders uh, instead. Uh, so obviously Josh McDaniels was fired um, a few weeks ago from the Raiders. And uh, let's go through some head coaching odds. Um, so I want to hear from you, like run, run through with me. I want you to guess what are the top five okay. coaching odds for the, va- the Raiders. I like this. So before I do this, let me just say my Wi-Fi is a little spotty right now. So if there's like a weird delay as you're watching this, that's why. Um, all right. <sighs> Harbaugh. I know there's some ties there. Um, the rumors have been that or the Chicago job. I'm going to guess Harbaugh is one of the top three. John Gruden. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't – I mean, Ben Johnson's probably going to be, like, listed in the top odds for all openings, so I'm going to guess that. I haven't mm-hmm. heard ties to that specifically. Um, B enemy was a hot name at one point, but I think now with – ron rivera's age he's kind of just the coach in waiting there so i don't think he's going to be listed on very many of these um <sighs> try to think of other coordinators was so i know like lewis reddick was a gm candidate i'm also thinking through so like One I've thought about, I don't think his name's out there. I just personally have wondered about this. Like, is Jim Caldwell's name still, you know, that's more just me personally being surprised he hasn't done their gig yet. Um, Yeah, so let me just say my actual guess is I think you're going to have Harbaugh, they're going to have Ben Johnson. Um, Just to make it fun, let's say Staley. I don't know if you can bet him mm. if he's already on another team, but if he gets fired, I just think it'd be funny if he immediately took another job in the division. Um, I, I will say there is there is someone on this list that is currently a head coach on an, another NFL team. Belichick. No. All right, I'll, I'll read it off to you, okay? Uh, yep. So this is according to a certain site, and it says um, – the, the number one with plus 350 odds is Ben Johnson. Um, mm, number two. Pl- wow. Yeah. Number two plus 400. This was made on November 1st, by the way. So some things may have shifted. It's been a couple weeks. Um, but number two plus 400, Ron Rivera. What? That number is th- just light your money on fire if you're giving <laughs> betting on Ron Rivera to be coaching. No shot. Number three, um, plus 425, someone I've never heard of before, Frank Smith, who is... <laughs> that's, just a na- that's just a name generator. That's not a real person. <laughs> Frank Smith sounds like he should be part of this podcast, to be honest. Frank Smith sounds like the Key and Peele sketch where they're going through the funny names, and at the end, he's like, Frank, Frank Smith, Smith, BYU. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So he's the Dolphins offensive coordinator. Uh, um, oh, okay. So that actually will be a name that I'm sure is going to yeah. get traction so number four is jim harbaugh at plus 750 yep number five this is the one that i'm looking at that i'm like if if i wanted to place money on on this i think i i think i would do it here um i'm not going to because i don't give a rip about the raiders future head coach to be honest but if i was going to cowboys defensive coordinator dan quinn Ooh. Plus eight fifty. Okay, I like the odds. Yeah, and I like the fit defense has there. played really well this year. Yep. Um, okay. we got Raheem Morris, who's the Rams DC at plus one thousand, mm-hmm. and then the last three are just well. One of them is the field. the The other two are hilarious to me. Okay, and I I can't even take this seriously, but it's Deion Sanders plus twelve hundred. And Urban Meyer plus twenty five hundred. Uh, yeah, I forgot. So Urban's gonna be. I think when you look at college football futures, he actually will be like a top two or three for some of those jobs. Um, I don't see him going back to the NFL. Well, Michigan I, may have a head coaching of opening. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> that is. Uh, yeah, you know what we need after our coach has had 
multiple scandals. We need to bring in a, a somebody to really stabilize the program, like Urban Meyer. <laughs> Oh, this is great content for Michigan Ohio State week. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna lead right into that at some point. Yeah. Um, well, that anyway. What was it? Frank Johnson <laughs> was the Dolphins guy. Frank Smith. Frank Smith. Um, I mean, that is, is that where you're putting your money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bob <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> um, oh boy, I, um, I agree with you though. So we talked about this last week. If you're betting a future, to me. Quinn or somebody like that is like to me it's just as likely as any of those favorites and you're getting double the value you do on like a Ben Johnson or somebody it's like I don't know I'm never betting the favorite on a future unless you really have like some kind of inside knowledge of the situation (laughs) it's like there's just no value in that Ben Johnson you don't know for sure he's leaving if you do you don't know for sure where he's going and you're only getting plus 350 to me that's just not worth the, cra- the crazy the, the probably one of the biggest reasons to not to have the Raiders not take Harbaugh or Meyer for example is the bigger names are going to need bigger money and guess what the Raiders for like the next four years are still paying off Gruden and <laughs> Josh McDaniels so I was talking with a guy about this today basically yeah. the only coach they're not paying was the interim coach they had, who was the yeah. best of the three coaches. Rick Basaccia, the Packers special teams <laughs> yeah. coach. Yeah. So the best of the three last coaches they've had is the only one they're not still paying. <laughs> it's just funny to me. That is That's a funny. well-run organization right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Still somehow better than the Bears, even though they lost to the Bears. So True. Yeah, you're right. Ha. Anyway. <laughs> Tyson Bajant <laughs> Goat. Okay. Um. I also this is this is this has been news as within the last week or so. Um, if you don't mind leaning into one of my teams here, I want to talk about Mr. Shohei Otani and his mm-hmm. odds. Do you have those? Too? Baseball. Yep, I have them pulled up. Um, this one's. I'll, I'll read this one. This one's from Fox Sports, uh, where Whoa. their odds are. No free sponsors. Yeah. So I will say this. The Cubs at one point, like before the offseason, they were at like plus 1,000, plus 1,200 for Otani. Let me guess. And then now. when, well, hold on. Plus, when, well, hold okay, on. When free agency opened, when free agency opened, the Cubs moved yeah. to plus 700. Okay. So now where are they? Plus 400. The Cubs are plus 350 okay. to land Shohei Otani. I'm guessing second, they're the second best odds behind the Dodgers. Yep, the Dodgers are plus one ten. Where are the Tigers Tani. at? <laughs> uh, they would fall into the category Not, that says yeah. any other team plus two thousand. <laughs> team plus two thousand. The White Sox plus ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So you got Dodgers, Cubs, uh, and that those are really close together. After that, you go on a pretty big jump because you, you, there's like two hundred points separating the Dodgers and the Cubs, basically. Then you go a 300 point jump to the Giants, then another 150 to the Yankees, Mets, Rangers, Red Sox, Mariners, Angels, Phillies, Blue Jays, and Padres. Uh, so those are your, yeah. Uh, Blue Jays doesn't make any sense to me. They're kind no. of selling. Um, Neither do the Phillies. The Phillies, Phillies, the Phillies no. are pretty maxed out. The Yankees, it feels like don't have a clear direction i think they're just up there the yankees are up there for the same reason that like the lakers and the cowboys are always up there in championship futures they're just up there because of the name um i could see the yeah. mets being like that mystery third team you know yeah. like every baseball free agent has the mystery third team and mets feel like they would fit that bill the question is um, just like so they've spent big money on pitchers that haven't worked out do you do it again and hope you just get it right this time or do you shy away from doing it again yeah to me, I think it is a two horse race, Dodgers Cubs. Yep. Like the odds say that, the narratives I've seen and just like Twitter speculation seem to say that. Um, yep. Yeah. I hope it's the Cubs. Obviously, just because not that the Cubs are a small market team, but nobody wants to see them go to the Dodgers or the Mets. Or I the know. Yankees. So it's, um, I just think it'd be fun. Plus, obviously, for us as as we talk sports, it'd be one more thing to talk about. So. 
it's definitely yeah, no. live as an option. It's not just like a it'd be fun if this happened. It's a yeah real possibility. Yeah, it's not like oh the Cubs made the list, but they're plus two thousand. No, the in Cubs the are the right. Yeah, the Cubs are right there. Like you said, it's a two horse race. There's been mixed reports that have actually said that Shohei wanted to go to the Cubs in free agency, but his that at the time the NL did not have the designated hitter position, oh, and he wanted a place where he could have that. And so he chose the Angels because they were out west and hmm. had that. So that makes sense why Obviously. the Dodgers would be a factor now and weren't then. Yep. 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 Hmm. So, so that's going to be the question is like, does he want to stay in California? And then the Dodgers are a factor. I know his former teammate too, right, is on the Cubs. Um, and you're just going to a big city there. <clears throat> I don't know if they're actually former teammates or they're just friends. League, yeah, you're referring or to league, mate. Say well, they were, And they were on, maybe it was the national team they were on. Um, oh, sure. Sure. sure yeah. Sure. But. Yeah, in the Japanese baseball, is it league or, um, yeah, whatever that organization was, they at least played together and were friends. So, yeah, yeah. Um, All right, yeah. So I, I I'm excited, and and like I, I have all sorts of things I've heard from Cubs stuff. Like one of the popular things going right now is that Shohei's a very private person. He doesn't really like to be like under the spotlight a ton. Um, at least when he's not playing and people have said, well, in LA being a very celebrity culture, you're going to get hounded wherever you go. And apparently a lot of Cubs athletes have said that they love Wrigleyville because it, because it's a neighborhood, you can pretty much walk around and sure. People might say like, Hey, go Cubs. Or, you know, like mm-hmm. you were great yesterday or whatever, yeah. but it's nothing like, Oh, you're going to be hounded with paparazzi and oh, sign my hat and whatever Mm -hmm. um if you're a private person and you don't want anyone to ever see you or talk to you white Sox would be a great choice why because you get shot because you'll play (laughs) because you'll play in front of 17 people a night oh there you go and no one will even know you exist or the tampa bay rays you'll be on a good team you'll be on a good team team that nobody gives a shit about (laughs) exactly correct (laughs) it's so crazy It, it makes me mad how good the team is and no one cares it's like i would kill to have a team (laughs) that's perennially that good in my sports town oh man all right that's good well let's uh let's go ahead and let's get into this weekend of games so this is kind of a unique weekend because it's a holiday weekend um happy thanksgiving to all our my fellow pilgrims as john wayne would say out there um thank you uh so <clears throat> we have a full thanksgiving slate followed by a full black friday slate plus your regular weekend slates of games There's a lot going on so let's get right into the turkey day festivities um starting us off bright and early in the morning i believe at around 11 30 central time we yes. have the packers of green bay visiting the lions of detroit uh, the line is seven and a half. The over under is 46 and a half. Thoughts? The seven and a half lines are always so tough. Um, you just saw this bear line, covers. right? Yeah, yeah you bears, covered. Covers, bears covered seven and a half. But all, well, that was just such an anomaly game, too. And the Lions come back and win by a touchdown and don't cover like that hook the you know the 0.5 either way seven the difference between obviously seven and a half and six and a half is just a huge number if you're waiting though so like as a lions fan i'm like i'd love to bet the lions but i don't love seven and a half i don't think this gets to six and a half it's minus 110 now either way um let me pull up some betting data and see who's betting what um well while you pull that up what i'll say is this just going off of going off of vibes the Lions Bears game was as much of a trap game as you could have had. Like everything yep. about that game says the Bears should have won that game. Well, even got down to win probability, right? Bears forced four turnovers in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, they're winning by 12 with two scores with only four minutes left. Um, you were able to take off a large chunk of time. Um at one point, all all arrows pointed to the Bears winning that game, 
and obviously they bears it up and that didn't happen. But my point is, is it seemed to me that after that chargers duel that they had, it felt like the lions were due for a letdown game on man, that bears game was a super letdown game because nobody on that team really was looking super good until the last three minutes of the game, basically. Um, like even, even Aiden Hutchinson was basically getting minimal pressure until mm-hmm. he forced the game winning safety basically on, yep. on field. So uh, taking that into account, just for myself, I look at that short week with, with short weeks. It's easy to just like burn the tape and move on to the next thing, like forget and move on. And I look at that and I just look at the lions. They've had a few close games in a row now, um, including one where they should have lost. And obviously I'm biased as a bears fan, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to lean lines here. Minus seven and a half. Uh, they're due to have a game where they come back and win. They absolutely manhandled the Packers at green Bay um, earlier this year. And they usually play pretty well against green Bay at Ford field as well. So I'm going to go with the, the lions here to beat the Packers. The other reason I'm not to beat them to cover the other reason I'm cu- picking the Lions to cover is because my coworker, who's a Packers fan, today he we, we do these Dr. Pepper bets where whoever wins, whoever loses buys the winner, Dr. Pepper. And uh, today he just comes up to me. He's like, let's do a Dr. Pepper bet for the Thanksgiving game. I'll take the Packers, you take the Lions. And I'll be like, I'm like. Money line. You even... oh. What? <laughs> just say, no, yeah, you... money line. <laughs> I should have said that, but no, he said that. And I'm like, I didn't, you don't even know that I like seven and a half for the lions. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but you're going to cheer for the lions. I'm like, I mean, yeah, but okay, fine. And so that's Strong the other reason you into a bet. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? What data did you find? I'm the one I normally use and I'm not going to say who it is. Cause again, they're not a sponsor. Okay. Here I got it. Um, it didn't have the lines out yet. So spreads looks like seven and a half everywhere. Um, Detroit green Bay. Um, holy crap. Okay. Um, percentage. So it basically it doesn't say in like public or we're, we're trying to find is the public side. Like what are, what are most people, most bets being placed on which side? Right. So seven and a half, this is, um, so you're looking look at like MGM Caesars. Let's go with FanDuel here. Um, lions are receiving, 94% of the money against Ooh, the spread and 95% of the bets. That's um, not a good vibe. So it looks like the Lions are the public side, which normally favorites just are the public side. So the public's also on Dallas and San Francisco. Um, what? So really, this isn't relevant. The number of bets and the money are both kind of the side people are on. One thing that can you still hear me? It was cutting for a second. Yep. Um, yep. Keep going. Yep. What's interesting, and you see this more in college, is if like 40% of the bets are making up 70% of the money, which means less bets are coming in on a certain side, but a lot more money is coming in, which means you're seeing sharps and like big money bettors come in, like professional gamblers come in on a certain side. So if you're seeing, oh, the 90% of the bets are on the lions, but you know, only 50% of the money is on the Lions. All right, that means a lot mm-hmm. of big money bettors are betting the Packers. So something to look up there. I, I don't see a big, you know, telltale sign either way on that. But um, yeah, I agree with your logic, though. I think the Lions should win this game. The Lions played really well in this matchup in Lambo. You're at home here. I also, maybe this is like dumb gambling logic. The fact that the Lions played really poorly against the Bears makes me feel even better about them in this matchup because they're due for a bounce back spot. Plus, if anything, I think a lot of people are going to see this and say the Packers just won and Jordan Love might have figured something out, which he did play really well. And the Lions just barely beat the Bears and Jared Goff was terrible. Plus, I'm getting seven and a half. Like, I think the sports books kind of begging you to take the Packers Um, Yeah, when they throw a number out there like seven and a half. Um, so yeah, if I had to take a side, I'm going to lean lions. I'm probably looking at, so the lions have really struggled in the third quarter of games. Um, I'm probably looking at like a lions 
first half line maybe um mm. so like if the line is seven and a half let me see if i can get a first half like four and a half so let me see the line for the first half is four and a half lions minus four and a half first half basically it's like leading by more than a field goal at halftime i like they came out and started quick against them in green bay so there might be some other angles to look for there you can get too cute and try to do too much of that where it's like the second quarter under you know it's like you can do too right. much on that sometimes but um because seven and a half is just such a tough number i don't know too like the, these are thanksgiving games does that really fit the like prime time unders thing i don't know it's a short week uh, that affect? i so i'm not gonna probably just default to the under i think i like the lions in the spot i don't love the numbers so i might look for like an alternate or you parlay lions minus six and a half with like a really high alternate under you know something like that um so yep yeah, I yeah I agree with you on on a lot of that. Um, I I'm looking at this game in terms of props. I I like Jameer Gibbs as an anytime touchdown option for What's this odd? game. Um, I have no idea. I haven't looked yet. Uh, um, I right now this. what I'm looking right now what I'm looking at that I am kind of liking is uh Jordan Love over 233 and a half passing yards. Um, yeah, especially if you think the Lions are going to be leading a lot of the game. Yep. Yep. So I, I, I got like touchdown props. Uh, the favorite is Montgomery minus one fifty. Jameer Gibbs is next minus one twenty five. Amon I'll Ross St. That, Brown yeah. is next plus one hundred five. AJ Dillon's the, the fourth though. option. Yeah, Dill- AJ Dillon's the fourth option. And Jones, I don't think it's been announced, but he was carted off last week. Yeah, um, he won't so play on a short week. There's no way. Play. Yeah, Sam honestly, honestly, I'm betting, I'm betting like. I'm betting a Packers wide receiver before I'm betting AJ Dillon, to be honest. Like, yeah, from what I've seen of AJ Dillon, he ha- he's been largely disappointing. Maybe I've missed some more recent stuff, but mm. um, but his legs like, are so big. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think so. Like, yeah, like they call- Quadzilla. That's what they call him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, call him Cakezilla. Five um, kingdom come. Five oh will be my. done. <laughs> <laughs> The kingdom's not the uh, nah, I won't go there. Um, <laughs> a, so yeah, like AJ Dillon plus one forty. I would rather bet a Jaden Reed plus two forty. I agree with you on that. Agreed. Um, completely agree. And if you're betting Lions props too, it's like Jameer Gibbs at minus one twenty five is not terrible. S- betting any receiver at basically even money. I know say Brown's um, a really good yeah. receiver, but like I like Laporta plus one eighty better. I even like really? if you go later. Like you look at Jamison Williams plus four ten. I just if I'm gonna bet a I'll prop, I'm gonna one. I'm gonna make it a little more upside. Like because if I'm gonna bet a prop, I'd rather do and it's everybody's personal preference, right? But I'd rather do like a quarter unit bet on a plus you know five hundred prop than do like a full unit and just be sweating out like a full size bet. You know, I don't know. It's whatever you want to do, but um, Brock it is whatever Wright I want to do. That's what betting is. It's that's true. <laughs> So, you can't tell Jordan Love anytime touchdown plus seven hundred. I don't hate. Yeah, he's a little mobile. Lions have struggled with mobile quarterbacks. That's a fair point. No, I like that. And with your with Jones out, that would potentially yeah. open up. I don't know. If they, I don't know if something. I really see them doing design runs as much with him, but maybe they run a few. But the thought um, of that would probably be more. You're in the red zone, third and five. He like sure. rolls out and he just runs it. You know. But at plus seven hundred, you know, it's worth a yeah. look. Let's jump. Let's jump. Oh, forward. we're getting intel here from MJ. Oh, um, M- he- Jones is out three to see three to six weeks. Uh, MCL sprain. Packers have three wide receivers. Three wide out. receivers out. What? What receivers are playing? <laughs> I <Is> don't. Watson <laughs> not playing because I didn't see him in the. Oh, he's he here. was on there. Dalvin Watson Reed is out. Reed. Okay interesting Reed. oh musgraves and wicks okay so, so you're basically maybe... a two yeah watson and dubs and then don't forget okay. samari toure or whatever his name is who could the forget goat. Uh, malik Sam... eth yeah. <laughs> yeah um all right, all yeah, right well, that's hey enough. that's that's why we have a packers fan as uh our leader so that's why the short weeks are tough too it's like guys coming <laughs> off of injuries and being banged up it's just uh Oh yeah, Toure hasn't played in three weeks. 
but you can bet him to score a touchdown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, I know so, the players have kind of said Thanksgiving's fun, but like Thursday games in general, a lot of them aren't fans of. So, um, all right, yeah. we we got a lot more into that game than normal because it's a divisional matchup, and I'm a Lions fan, but um, a little bit of fun well, look at some of the props. Well, the next divisional matchup is the Washington Commanders and Dallas Cowboys, what used to traditionally be the Pilgrims versus Indians game uh, until they took that away from some people. Not me, because I'm a, co- I'm, a, I'm a politically correct cowboy. Uh, but mm. uh, the, the line here is Cowboys minus 10.5, and, um, and the over-under is 48.5. So my very first thought, is that you're going to take the under for t- halftime total because mm. it was announced that, listen, just hear me out, okay? okay? It was announced that Dolly Parton is performing the halftime show. So yeah. I think the total at the half is going to be nine to five. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that would be a wild first half, too. Three field goals to a field goal and a safety. A safety, yeah. <laughs> Can't no, don't take Parton is still performing. I don't know. I don't actually know what the under is. I have no idea. But going off of my gut reaction here, um that was enough for me. I'm sold. I I kind of like the Cowboys, to be honest with you. I know ten and a half is a big <laughs> number. I kind of like it over the are commanders. there major injuries to Washington? Because Howell is kind of I'm not gonna say figured it out. He's looked solid. I the yeah. Cowboys are one of those teams, though, when they win. They win big. They're at home, but also a division rivalry game. I mean, look at Bears Lions. Like, I don't. I, I'm gonna probably take the points. Um, that number is just bigger than I would have guessed it is. So I need to check injury reports. Just make sure I'm not missing something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm taking Washington if there's full rosters here. What do you think about? Um, what do you think about the first? So the first half total is 23 and a half the You're under the key number yeah the the under is plus 110 the over is one minus 130 oh wait what's the game over under 48 and a half again mj coming through with the injury report from the commander's monday practice is great bunch of people i haven't heard of curtis samuel so no major yeah limited Antonio yeah. Gibson was limited that's pretty yeah. big I, thing so I'm not seeing there. anything that's gonna make me so if Howell's playing I'm taking commanders here what whatever will they do without Effie Obada <laughs> oh man watch he's gonna be like actually a super impactful player and we're gonna look like such casuals right now <laughs> Cowboys injury report too um yeah Michael yeah. Gallup was a, did not participate because of pre, uh, personal. CD Lamb has an ankle. Um, yes, he does. <laughs> it's an but important. But he was thing a to have. full participant, so yeah. I don't so see anything sticking out. Pretty in standard one. here. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking Commanders. I'm going to go ahead and just unofficially yeah, not, lock that in. I'll be I, right. I sit here right now, not entirely sure where I want to go, um, but right now I'm leaning Cowboys. Mm. But I do it. Shoot out. I Make have I, I have our wheel set for that. You'll find out what that is. Oh boy, uh, coming up. But right. uh, no, so that that's kind of what I'm thinking. I I do kind of like the under for the first half total though, plus one ten, twenty three and a half. I don't know. It could be interesting. Yep. The first half goes by so quickly. Okay. All, that's all I know. So, all right. Mm. So Thursday night football, we've got the Seattle Seahawks visiting. Everyone's favorite prospectors out west, San Francisco 49ers. Seahawks um, are at home. Are they? I'm sorry. My uh, my internet's been I very slow you. loading. There you go. Thank you. Uh, loading the sports book in front of me. Um, so, almost there. Here we are. Okay. So, yeah, Seahawks at home. Uh, the Niners are seven point favorites on the road over under is 43 and a half. Your thoughts? You know what? I'm going to say this. I'm not going to do this because I'm probably betting the Lions. And I think to make this work, you have to follow oh, this boy. and do all three. Here we go. If, if you 
if you <laughs> bet all three underdogs in this game against the spread, you're going to hit two out of three. I am. Yeah. I think if you bet Packers plus seven and a half, Seahawks plus seven, Commanders plus ten and a half, you're going to hit two of them. Like, yeah. The public loves favorites, and all of these are di- – like I, that's kind of been my thing in the NFL is divisional underdogs. You're if you bet three divisional underdogs, and I know two of them are on the road, but especially at home, I just think you're going to make money. Um, so I, we still should yeah. break all these down. We've been talking about it, and I know I said I like the Lions there, but I think that's probably the move, especially when they're all key numbers. You're getting plus seven and a half plus seven a plus ten and a half two of those are north of key numbers and one's right at seven maybe you push on one but you know i think that's the way i would lean all the underdogs um yeah i like yeah i I like the the seahawks here as a home team home plus seven um i'm i i kind of liking the over in this game Mm, it's the lowest of the three 43 and a half, yeah. Um, both teams have decent defense. Obviously, the Niners have a juggernaut defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't love the touchdown spread, personally. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm not going to – unless that moves, I'm I may, I'm probably not even going to touch that. I'm probably just going to stick mm-hmm. with an over-under pick. I like the over for that, I think. Um, I could easily see – getting up to 45 points in this game. So I'm going to stick with that. Again, these are my initial takes. These these things might change, but that's kind of where I'm leaning now. If you do um, like the right. Niners right now, minus seven is only minus 106, plus yep. seven on the Seahawks is minus 114. That tells me if it's going to move, it might go to six and a half for a second. I bet the second it does, it gets bet back to seven. But you yeah. might, if you keep an eye out, you might be able to get a nine or six and a half. Um, Six maybe and a half even I'm some other, Yeah, maybe even some yeah. other books might have that. And maybe I'm wrong, but like based on the way those odds show for each side, it would seem to say it might move that way. So yeah. yeah. Um, all, all right. right. I want to hit black for the Black Friday game, the first ever in NFL's history. Um I can. Uh the Miami <laughs> Dolphins at the New York Jets. Um <laughs> initially an intriguing matchup with Aaron Rodgers in the mix, but obviously he has he is MIA with his Achilles. He's uh, gonna be back. Mend. It's the Dolphins. That's his cure, remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just needs to <laughs> listen to the Dolphins warm ups and he'll be healed. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, so Dolphins minus nine and a half. <clears throat> the no. Dolphins seem like a very volatile team. They seem yep. like one, like, obviously you have the 70-point game against the Broncos. Crazy. But then yep. they're also a team where it's like they barely eke out a win over the Raiders. Or did they mm-hmm. lose the Raiders? I don't even remember what happened. But it's like, it's they're not, I don't know what to take. I don't know what to do with them. I don't. Um, I think we're still trying to figure it, out if they're even good. <laughs> Like, that, and that makes it a problem for the over under too, because yeah. right now it's at 41, right? And so you either could say, well, I think like to me, I lean under when I look at that, but what if the dolphins have one of these games where they're putting up 40 some points on a bad jets team? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't really know what to do with them. Um, I may not I even exactly bet this game at I'm all. Doing. I, if I, if I'm picking something right now, I'm probably going to pick a, if he's playing, a Devin A. Chan anytime touchdown. I am going with the New York Tim Boyles plus nine and a half. Um, Tim Boyles sucks. I mean, you're a Bears fan. I'm a Lions fan. We've both seen him play with our teams, unfortunately. He's terrible. Like, if you're a Jets fan, you're like, quarterback situation can't get any worse. I promise you it can get worse. <laughs> but... I think you see when coaches are fired or when quarterbacks are changed, you get a little bit of a galvanized locker room just for a second. The team kind of responds, rallies around the new person, whoever that is. You saw it with the 
Raiders and their head coach this year. Um, I think you could see it with the Steelers and their offense. Like I like betting on fired coaches or benched quarterback spots, um, especially because everybody's going to be betting against the Jets, seeing a new quarterback. Defense, though, is consistent. They do have one of the best defenses in football against what is a pretty inconsistent Dolphins team. The Dolphins are a little team go play on the road in new york in the cold outdoor stadium and i'm taking the quarterback nobody wants to bet i'm i love the jets on this spot it's a big number honestly all you did just now was convince me even more to take the under <laughs> like i oh well, yeah nothing, i think that's listen if you're taking the underdog that's the side i'd take the jets and the under here i don't know if i am taking. i i i jets. I, I, I get what you're saying about teams route nobody's take, rallying around tim boyle <laughs> Tim, I like, am rallying around no, Tim Boyle. Nobody. I will wave the flag for Tim Boyle. He Tim's is going to be he's family the is happy. He's not there on the Tim team, Boyle right? is the future like, in New York. <laughs> yeah, Tim Boyle. Right. Like no, the, like okay. I would the rather Raiders have going a Boyle. Eight, eight and O'Connell. That Boyle. makes sense because you have a young yeah. first year quarterback. Oh, maybe he can be something. The Bears respond to Tyson Bajan. Same thing, right? Oh, maybe he can do Tim something because he's young. first year. Tim Boyle has proven over and over again that he can barely throw football. Okay. Whoa, so, dude. Yeah. Tim Boyle is a professional. <laughs> he is technically a professional quarterback. That is true. Uh, that I is, believe. That is true. So is Tommy DeVito. So, uh, yeah, and he's awesome. Yeah, actually, he had a great game last week. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle was a Packer too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. See, he's the most experienced. You can't put a price on experience. Think about all the great things he's learned under Lions and Bears quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I, I am taking let's, the Jets though, for sure. Let, let's talk Michigan, Ohio State. Mm. let me get the lines up here this game he listen li, guys I was, he's been texting me all week about how every time he talks about michigan ohio state he feels like he's gonna throw up because every time he's getting <laughs> just super amped about whatever's about to happen in this game because it's the biggest game in the universe the universe's history basically yeah and I just I honestly don't know if I buy that, but not like even hyperbole. Half, this is the most important sporting event that has ever been played. Three and um, a half is the line. Forty five yep. and a half is the over under. I think you lean under. Rivalry game. Both teams are going to try to establish the run. <coughs> it's so hard. So, firstly, I, I am unable to take the emotion out of this game. So. <laughs> Take everything I say here with a grain of salt. Um, I think the lot, the line is a kind of right where it should be. Home field advantage being worth a few points. Both teams undefeated. There's question marks around both teams. I think on paper, Michigan's a better roster, and they're at home. Kyle McCord is a huge question mark. He has not played well in the two big games, Penn State and Notre Dame. I know he won, they won both games. The defense does look better. The question I have for Michigan is, ever since Harbaugh has been suspended here this second time, but also the first suspension where he was out for those first three games, since Sh in the games that Sharon Moore was the head coach, he's, he's the head coach, the acting head coach, the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach. There's a reason programs have a different coach for each of those roles. That's just a lot to have on your plate. I think it's too much for one guy to handle. They're kind of scrambling to try to make it work. But in all the games that Sharon Moore has been the acting head coach, the offensive, the offense has underproduced like S and P projections of output and all that stuff by like a full touchdown. JJ McCarthy's numbers have been a lot worse in games that, Sharon Moore is the head coach and I, the, the easy narrative. And it's just obviously what people are going to say is like, Oh, it's because they don't have signs anymore. Um, but it was the beginning of the year too. Facts. when Harbaugh was out. Yeah, that's just true. Um, but it was when Harbaugh was out earlier, you know, beginning of the year too. I think it's just too much on Sharon Moore's plate. 
So the big X factors to me are Kyle McCord, I still don't think is very good. I know Harrison's really good, but I think on the road, Kyle McCord could make the one or two big mistakes that flip the game. I also don't know that Michigan's going to be able to figure out their offense as it relates to like the coaching staff changes in time. So because both questions are with the offense, I would lean the under. I think in a rivalry game, if I'm being completely objective, which I can't be, you probably take the points. So you probably take three and a half for Ohio State. But I think if Michigan wins, it'll look a lot like the last two years where Michigan could win by 10 plus points. I think if Ohio State wins, it's going to be a closer game. So that's all I have really on the cap. Um, but again, it's I'm so anxious for this game because this is the last Michigan-Ohio State game before the playoff expands. So there's a very good chance this is the last one that's like a true elimination game because you're going to see like two or three lost teams in the playoff discussion. Almost every year, if both teams are the level they've been the last few years, this game is just going to affect seeding. It's not going to affect who actually makes the playoff. Um, not saying it's not going to still matter. Like you look at Duke, North Carolina, that rivalry still matters and they both make the tournament if they're both good, you know. So it's still going to matter. It's just not going to be the same. It's not going to be an elimination game. This game is essentially a playoff game. And with all the controversy, Ryan Day cannot afford to lose a third straight game when Harbaugh's not even on the sidelines. And if Michigan loses this game, it kind of validates all the people who are saying, whether it's fair or not, people are going to feel validated and saying, see, Michigan cheated. And when they can't cheat, now they, you know, they lost to Ohio State. So this is a huge game for the narratives of both programs. If Harbaugh's gone, this is a huge game to determine if Sharon Moore's the guy moving forward. Um, there's just a lot on this game outside of the fact that both teams have national title hopes and one of these teams is going to be eliminated after the game. So um, so it's huge. I, I mean, I'm confident. I think Michigan is going to win. I don't know about the point spread. This is probably one I just don't bet. Like, I don't need to bet this game, <laughs> be invested. Like I said earlier, oh, the main man. value in betting for me is to raise the level you care about a game, and it is impossible to raise any more the level that I care about the game. Just, so. just lay money line on Michigan. That way it's, yeah. I thought about, so some people do the emotional hedge where they would be, be like, I bet $100 on Ohio State money line so that if Michigan loses, I feel a little better. That wouldn't help me at all. Like, I don't. If I bet a hundred dollars on Ohio State, Michigan loses, so it's plus money money line. I make hundred and sixty bucks, hundred forty bucks, or whatever. It's like that's not going to make me feel any better. Yeah. Um, so I'm not on into the emotional hedges. So no, I'm not betting that. Um, but I wanted to talk about it. Obviously, it's the biggest game and uh, of your life. Yeah. If, if I. <laughs> If that game goes poorly, um, I may be off Twitter for a, a few weeks. Um, I've handed out a few receipts that uh, <laughs> may be <laughs> circling back around. So here's my um, thoughts on this I have game. a few tweets out there that could come back really badly. So, Yeah. Um, I think that you bring up a lot of different storylines that are going into it. And a lot of them end up being on the Michigan, on the Michigan side of things. There's less to say about Ohio state than there is about Michigan right now. Um, but to be honest, I look at, you brought up Ohio state's two best wins, Notre Dame and Penn state. Mm hmm. Notre Dame has shown that they really are just not even on the same level as Ohio State and Michigan, and Penn State's proven that too. Um, mm -hmm. And that's seen in just in the fact of how Michigan Michigan beat Penn State pretty convincingly, from what I remember. Um, mm -hmm. And both games were somewhat close, but Michigan just ran. So Michigan ran the ball, I think, thirty-seven straight times. Didn't yeah. throw a pass on the second half um, just because they didn't need to. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I 
I definitely don't think Kyle McCord is the same caliber of quarterback as the past two Ohio State quarterbacks that they've had, Stroud and Fields. Yep. Um, I struggle with this game as not a fan, just of like going off over the two sides. But in terms of three and a half, based on the past couple of years and based on the game is being played in the big house and there's more going against Michigan than there is against Ohio State, I kind of feel like that's going to be turned into – I feel like that will be more easily turned into motivation for Michigan than it will be bulletin board material for – or motivation mm-hmm. for Michigan as opposed to motivation for Ohio State. A um, lot of that depends on how the coaching staff presents that. So I agree that it sure. could be. But, but with co- well, Harbaugh is able to coach there. during the week. He is able to during the week, yeah. I mean, I'm going Michigan. I, I, I just don't – Ryan Day – I just don't like Ryan Day. That's part of it. But he also, like, he just comes off as choke artist to me. I'm like, he has, yeah. like, the biggest game he won was the Clemson playoff game that every Bears fan loves to post highlights of. Um, and ever since, I mean, ever since that game, he hasn't really. And I know people want to say, oh well, he they almost beat Georgia last year. Mm. They didn't though. Right, like that. Sure, they almost did. The Bears almost beat the Lions this last week, but they didn't. Okay, yeah. like almost, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Or whatever this, however that saying goes. So, yeah. I, I'm gonna lean Michigan here. Um, I just, I, I believe in Michigan more than I believe in Ohio State in terms of overall talent. Um, and then obviously yeah. playing at the big house, I think plays it plays into that too. So the, the <coughs> last thing I'll say on that is I agree. If you look at last year, so last year Michigan won by was it third or fifteen points or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, whatever it was by. Um, on paper, this year's Michigan team is better than last year's Michigan team. This year's Ohio State team is worse than last year's Ohio State team, in my opinion. Um, I know the defense for Ohio State has looked better. I think some of that's the teams they played, which you could say that of Michigan too. But um, I think their offense has regressed more than their defense has improved. Yeah, grade. You know, you'll see anywhere in the country for contending teams. And Michigan, remember, I think it's easy to forget, but Michigan didn't have Blake Corum last year, and. Um, you have Corum and Edwards this year. Last year, you didn't have Corum, and Edwards played, but his he had a cast on his right hand. He still had, you know, 200 yards and two touchdowns, but I think Michigan, on paper, should win this game by more than a touchdown. To me, it's just going to be the coaching. You know, like with – that was the Maryland game. Like, Maryland – Michigan should have beat Maryland by multiple touchdowns, and – coaching and execution and things like that just didn't come together the way they should have so if Harbaugh was on the sidelines I'd feel a lot more confident Uh, that's the factor for me I just it's hard to put a cap and a number when you're betting on coaching staff that's an unknown you know yeah um okay we're we're on long so I want to this is what we're gonna do we're gonna real quick Oregon, Oregon State. That's the other rank first ranked matchup this week. That's on Friday yep. night. Uh, 13 and a half is the line over under is 61 and a half. Um, I'm going to Oregon all the way here. They're just a different class mm-hmm. than Oregon State. It's just going to be hard. And it's at Oregon, too. So, um, yeah, I don't see Oregon State well, keeping up with them. I tend to like underdogs in these rivalry games. Oregon is just one of those rare teams that can beat you by. 30 points they've done it multiple times i think too this week florida state had the injury to jordan travis and they've dropped in the playoff rankings washington is now a playoff team i think oregon is kind of starting to peak at the right time they're already looking ahead to the championship game the the pac-12 championship game um i think this could be like a big make a statement for the playoff committee kind of win because they're the six they're ranked sixth right now i think you'd argue they're actually one of the best two or three teams in the country so um, okay, so then the so the next thing I want to do is 
you're better at college football than me by a lot. What general advice do you have for people that are wanting to to place bets on this uh, rivalry weekend, the last weekend of college, regular season college football? We kind of talked about this on the Thursday games. It especially plays true in college football where emotions run higher. You have less experience, a lot more fluky plays. I think if you bet mostly on underdogs, you're going to be like sight unseen. If you're like, I'm going to go through and I'm going to bet every underdog in these rivalry games, you're going to do a lot better than if you say, I'm going to bet every favorite. And, you know, you have to pick mm-hmm. your spots to bet favorites. So for me, it'd be like, hey, maybe I think Michigan and um, Oregon are my favorites. If you're going to do that, you probably should lean Mississippi State over Mississippi, maybe, or lean a TCU plus nine and a half against Oklahoma. Um, Iowa is plus two and a half at Nebraska. That's kind of weird. Also, it's a 26 and a half is the total, which is just hilarious. Um, yeah, that might be the new record. I know last week was the record. Um, you just can't set those lines low enough, but like Texas, Texas Tech, maybe you lean Texas Tech plus 12 and a half. I just think as a general rule in these rivalry games, you're probably going to be trying to find your spots to bet favorites. But if you're not sure, I would probably lean underdog just emotional close rivalry game end of the year you get a lot of chaos i'll say this too there's going to be a few of these games that are like straight up upsets so not even michigan ohio state but like you're looking oh i like texas a&m plus 11 and a half over lsu some of those kind of lines the yeah. underdog's gonna straight up beat the favorite like you're gonna yeah. see a few results this week that are just shocking so um so yeah i like underdogs All- All right, so then the last thing I want to do as far as college football is concerned is our Sharp Money Shootout. So what I've prepared for us is a wheel of all of the Big Ten matchups with removing Michigan and Ohio State from it. Um, And we will bet based on that one. So, again, for those that are seeing this for the first time, our Sharp Money Shootout is our own little game we play on here where, um, like in a Cowboy Duel, basically I'm going to – spin my chamber if you will oh Um, (laughs) and and, uh i have games loaded on this chamber uh and whatever it lands on that is the game we are going to bet okay and i've decided i think we were back and forth on this last week i think we need to bet directly in opposition of each other for this to work okay um sounds good so uh, we'll do a three, two, one countdown, which is a little hard with our delay, but we'll do the best we can, mm-hmm. and then we'll take our line. So here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel. We'll find out who we are going to bet this week. I might need help finding the line on the sports book. Okay. Oh boy. All right. So we are going to be playing Iowa, Nebraska. Oh baby. All right. Line is <laughs> no, Iowa on. plus two and a half over under twenty six and a half. Read that again for me. I'm sorry. Nebraska is favored minus two and a half over under is 26 and a half. Okay. You want to do the countdown? Yes. All right. Three, two, one under. All right. I'll take the over 26 and a half. The over. We have to directly oppose each other. What are you talking about? I agree. You took the under. Okay. What would you have bet? What would you have bet? I was going to thinking Iowa. <clears throat> Ooh, so I would take Iowa too. Um, <laughs> if we're gonna if we're gonna oppose each other, all right, I'm on the under. A ridiculously low four touchdowns. <laughs> it's the over. <laughs> so what was oh, the twenty six and a half? Twenty six and a half. That's right. crazy. That's like a team total over under. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's stupid. That's like a half timeline. Um, <clears throat> All right. Oh man, do you want to know the sad part about that? Is now yeah. because of this, I'm gonna probably find myself watching that lousy game <laughs> on Saturday. So the question is, they've set this over under lower and lower every week, and then the public bets it and it drops another three or four points. You can't set these numbers low enough. At some point, though, it's kind of like the prime time unders. It's, it's like at some gotta point break, right? it's got to break, and at once everybody becomes aware of it, then at yeah. some point. You know, everybody's on the under and an over hits. So, yeah. Um, so I don't know if I'll actually be betting this, but I think that's just for the memes. I'm going to take the under. Um, all right. 
Uh, let's let's since, again, right. since we're short on time, let's run through. We'll do NFL primetime games. We did the Thanksgiving and we did the fr- uh, Black Friday. So let's do Sunday night football. We've got where is it? We've got the Ravens and the Chargers mm. for Sunday night football. Kind of sight uh, three, unseen. I'm betting. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Three and a half is the line. Over under is 46 and a half. The Ravens are one of those teams, and maybe I just say this to make me feel better about the Lions getting clapped by them. Um, I think the Ravens, are, the Ravens are like one of the most complete teams in football, and I'm almost like, I know they've so they've let me down by letting up a couple late backdoor covers. I think they did it against the Cardinals and the Browns. Um, I'm tempted Lamar, to just bet them every week. <laughs> Lamar is slinging it. He's also passing. Oh, he's also yeah. passing the ball well. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of slinging it, uh, Miles Garrett fully embracing gray sweatpants season. Um, yeah, wow. yeah that, that was a uh, yeah. Well Mason Rudolph was um, <laughs> just glad he wasn't hit with that helmet. <laughs> yeah, um, man. Yeah, I agree with you. I my, I look at that. I'm in. I'm going three and a half immediately for yep. the Ravens. I love it. Chargers um, are just such a poorly coached team too. You're going to really John are. Harbaugh against Staley. It might be the but, biggest coaching mismatch. I will tell you, I know a lot of people like primetime unders. I kind of like the over. 46 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. The the only reason, the only pause I'd give is I think the Ravens are going to look to run the ball and probably should have success running the ball. So is that shorten the game? Take time off the clock. Yeah. Bosa is also going to be out. All right. Football. Monday night football. We have the Bears at the Vikings. Um, (sighs) The line is three and a half. The over under is 43 and a half. I don't know. How do both uh, teams respond? Because both teams just lost heartbreaking fashion, um, blew a lead late. This is where I might think, okay, I'm going to take the team I think has a coaching advantage because I think they're going to be more w- able to galvanize their locker room. But also, if neither team's good, I'm tempted to take the points, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm taking the Vikings and that. Right, well, mm. I, I don't know about the spread. I guess just in terms of winning and loss, I'm taking three and a half is a powerful number. <sighs> I'm I'm going to take the Vikings probably. Um, if not that, I'm going to take the under at forty three and a half. Mm. Um, yeah. The. Yeah, just with – so Justin Jefferson, I think, is supposed to be back for this game. He is supposed to be back. So yeah. that could affect things because more easily you're able to just kind of dump the ball to him. and. But also, is he going to have chemistry with Dobbs immediately? I, I would I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, then again, Josh Dobbs' own body chemistry doesn't have chemistry with itself. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, um, but – Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was not ready for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to get slapped by Will Smith. Keep Dom's um, name out. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he's a no, survivor. So I, 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 like, I, I, I like the under. Um, yeah. And I think I like the Vikings right now at three and a half. I would, obviously, I'm going to yeah. root for the Bears to win, but the bears had such a good performance for them on Sunday Mm -hmm. that now I'm expecting them to have kind of that letdown game where it's like, okay, back to snap back to reality. Right. Oh, there Um, goes gravity. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what's going to happen to the bears. So the reason I think I would lean that way too, is because their coaching staff's obviously terrible. I think if you have a good coaching staff, you can rally the troops and say like, Hey, that's not who we were. We were close. We just need to execute. I think the, the locker room is kind of probably going to start turning here oh, yeah. on because that it's was a prime stomach. example of fields was finally back. You know, the team was wanting him to succeed. They played really well and still lost. I think that's the week the locker room starts to turn. Um, I think fields is still There's played been for a couple job, players. And he's going to play, do everything he can, but you could even see him being frustrated late down the stretch. You know, like I just think the body language is start to get going to start to get bad mm-hmm. and the Vikings still feel like they're in the playoff race. How, however real they are. that is. They but, are. 
Yeah, yeah it's like right now they would be a playoff team. I don't. I agree. I, I think mean, I'd the Vikings still have a Vikings shot at the division, too. like just based on wins. True. Losses, yeah. So. Yeah, it's true. Technically, I mean, true. if the Packers win on Thursday, yeah, the Vikings are right back in it. The you Vikings know? win Monday. If the Packers win Thursday, I think they're a game out. And the Vikings and Lions still haven't Colin. played each other this season. So, yeah. like, you have two head-to-heads that you could really take advantage of that. If you, you... two head-to-heads within the last three weeks of the season. So Vikings yeah. really just need to hang within a few games. Um, and maybe if Kirk Cousins starts listening to Dolphin sex, maybe he'll come back in time. You never know. Yeah. Achilles just regrows. He sits out yeah. in the woods with Rodgers and smokes I, you know, crack for a few weeks. I don't want to injure myself, but I kind of want to injure my Achilles just so I can see if that works. I mean, you like, don't have to hurt your Achilles. Just listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know if it works. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, if I was spoiler, it, throat, it, it doesn't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to okay, listen okay. to positive affirmations and the sounds of dolphins <laughs> moaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful in the morning. Yeah, next time I'm going to be like, "Oh no, I have strep throat. I guess I'll listen to Dolphins Deep Throat, and that must <laughs> solve, that'll solve everything." <laughs> Rogers must love uh, Sea World, like Orlando. Yeah, yeah. it's like his <laughs> healing retreat. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. The, the amount of things that comes out of that guy's blowhole, man, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you all listening to another great episode of Wild Wild Bets. Um, Bet with us and make some money. We'll see you next week.